now that we've had our hands on Shajar and Choi Young for a couple of weeks now in Rise of Kingdoms, I think it's time I update my free to play guide for Archer mains because it's been like 10 months and I actually went back and checked out that video. And there's definitely a couple things that I want to update for free to play players and a couple of recommendations that I made in that video that I no longer think are true. So if you are a free to play Archer main, then this video is for you. And even if you're not, let's say you're an Archer main who's a low spender, medium spender or high spender I think this video can still provide a lot of value to you you just don't have to take as many liberties with being careful with certain investments and you may be able to invest a little bit heavier in some of the commanders that we talk about in today's video and this video will be especially helpful for new players who are focusing on archers so make sure you stay tuned but first what's going on guys cheers now as I typically do in this series I first want to define what I mean when I say maining a troop type okay if you are an archer main in my book Book and you're a free to play player then what that means to me is that you're going to be running predominantly archer marches and what that looks like for most free to play players is probably two archer marches in the end game with a single infantry march and a single cavalry march that are supporting those archers and the reason that you still branch out into other troop types instead of only running let's say three four five archer marches right is because the other troop types have some insanely good commanders that are just they're so meta that you can't skip you just can't skip them you have to run them they're that good and also as you're playing the game you're going to be getting blueprints for a whole bunch of different troop types and so why let them rot in your bag you might as well craft those things and use them and same thing with armaments right so just keep that in mind if you are a main for archers then in my mind I'm thinking you're running two archer marches one cap one infantry and if you are a low spender medium spender high spender or you've been playing the game for four or five years and you've got a ton of the commanders that we talk about already then perhaps you can branch off into a fifth army and then again if you are a spender then you can branch off into six and seven we're not going to cover six and seven marches in this video we'll barely touch on a fifth the first thing we're going to talk about is the best civilization for archer players and there are two answers first of all if you are not actively fighting you are not in a kvk then you should be running Germany and this is true for all players free to play low spend whatever everyone should run Germany if they're not actively fighting because you get 5% troop training speed and 10% action point recovery this is a no-brainer these are great for recovering in between KBKs action point recovery is amazing especially for free to play players who really rely on their action points to get a lot of value out of well out of everything but especially during like events and things like that chaining barbarians also troop training speed you're going to be passively training troops over time you want to get those you want to get as much as possible so that is really nice now if you are going into kvk then you want to switch to ottoman empire this is a no-brainer for archers uh they have such great synergy for ottoman of course not only do they have a special unit here in the form of the janissary but they also get five percent archer health which is incredible they get five percent march speed which they desperately need and you get five percent bonus skill damage which even to this day archers are all about aoe skill damage and the beautiful thing here is that the march speed and the skill damage also work for your other troop types so they work for your calves they work for your infantry so this is a no-brainer this is arguably the single best pvp open field fighting civilization at least at the time of recording this we may get another civilization in the next couple of months and maybe that would change but for archers right now it's a no-brainer go ottoman next let's talk about city skins and this is actually a massive change from 10 months ago when i made the last entry of this series and that's because if you guys didn't see in the latest face to face with the developers they're actually removing all of the debuffs from the different city skins here in the game all the city skins that are already in the game all city skins coming out in the future all of the downsides for the city skins are going to be removed which is huge what that means is that you will basically just be more flexible to run more city skins you don't really care too much really what I would recommend for archers you can get well really any city skin that focuses on giving you an archer bonus is going to be the way to go if you don't have any legendary skins for most archer marches you're probably going to want to get five percent archer health uh, typically health is going to be your lowest stats also you can make the argument that archer attack is actually pretty good because they just rely on aoe skill damage and the more attack you have the more damage you deal so having extra attack isn't that bad i know attack gets a really bad rap and in a priority list it's still going to be your lowest priority but having archer attack isn't the worst here so really you know without any downsides to these in the next couple of months when they finally update the uh the city skins 
then just use whichever one has you know archer health and you'll be good to go but this will be especially amazing when twilight falls has the infantry attack debuff removed this is going to be insane but twilight falls is a city skin you can get your hands on in a couple of different ways but primarily you're going to get it from the kvk shop you can spend 650,000 of your season tokens get your hands on this it's going to get you five percent extra skill damage which is great for archers especially we're going to talk about that and you'll see with these commanders we talk about skill damage is king for really every troop type except for maybe infantry but really skill damage pops off and also again you're going to be running a cavalry army most likely and probably one of your infantry commanders also is going to be uh skill damage so like just get twilight falls and you'll be happy you did it's also worth noting that if you can get your hands on top copy palace this is also a pretty good city skin you can run for archers because not only does it give you 10 percent on your defense which is nice but you get five percent action point recovery so if if you're a free to play player who you know you're going to switch to ottoman for fighting but you still want some of that action point recovery this is actually a pretty good option so consider that as well but i feel like bang for your buck twilight falls is still probably the way to go okay now we're going to touch on epic commanders very quickly for players that are brand new to the game truthfully in kvk1 and even before kvk1 you're probably only only going to run one army and that's probably going to be sun tzu with your ethel fled um it, this is just like a tried and true kvk1 pairing it's really nice you're probably going to run this uh, either mixed or all infantry but if you do want to run a full epic march um i would probably advise you against it but if you were going to do it you could do either herman primary with kusanoki secondary or you could do herman primary with emotep secondary uh, this is emotep is more of a sort of debuffer here which is very powerful it's up to five nearby targets three seconds they take 30 percent more damage and lose, lose 50 rage per second for three seconds very good stuff here very supportive out in the field you also get to run herman primary and sun tzu secondary um this is a great you know skill damage march but the problem is you're probably going to run your sun tzu with your ethel foot like i said before so there's a little bit of a conflict there so you do have a, a couple of options with that being said what should your first investment be as a free-to-play player in rise of kingdoms as a brand new player right the answer is and has always been richard the first and that's great news because he comes around so early but really what you want to do when his wheel of fortune comes around is you want to unlock lock him and then get this first skill to five that's going to cost 50 legendary commander sculptures for Richard um, don't use your universals here just spin the wheel a couple of times get that 10 spin reward and eventually you're going to get this first skill to five then you can leave the other skills at just one just unlock them right and you can use Richard for many years to come for PVE content that's player versus environment that is for grinding barbarians out in the world uh, you're gonna have really good use for Richard moving forward for a very cheap 50 legendary commander sculpture investment you can also use them in things like sunset canyon lost canyon and a bunch of different events where you want to have a very sort of tanky march here that has healing and also is a really you know solid do you have 30 percent uh damage reduction is really crazy pretty tanky i know he's an infantry commander but again you're not going to use him for pvp this is strictly a commander that you invested in the early game so that way you can use him to sort of grind events and just get value for your account beyond that uh, the first commander that is going to come uh on the wheel that is a legendary archer is Yi song yay and honestly um my tune has changed a little bit with Esong in the past you know a couple of months he's gotten a third relic upgrade and now that we've seen commanders like Shajar and Chio Young um really I think if you're going to be an archer main and you're really committed to archers um I actually think that the Esong Ye investment in the early game is actually a solid investment and it's always been decent right it's always been good you've always been able to get the value there out of Esong Ye even in the late game because he has that circular AoE these days is Esong Ye outclassed by other commanders absolutely no question of course we have Yuge Leong we have Herman Prime there's just better commanders than Esong Ye these days however Yi Song Ye still can hang in a two army lineup and we're going to talk about that later so if you're a brand new player and you know if you're going to be grinding like crazy then you can get Yi Song Ye and feel really good about that his circular AOE in combination with Richard primary is going to let you farm a ton of barbarians every single kvk every marauders there's just so many opportunities to get crazy value out of the free ap that you're going to be getting from isong ye effectively okay we're going to talk more about isong ye later but really if you're going to invest in isong ye you want to do all or nothing okay 
it is 690 legendary commander sculptures to expertise Sung Yeh. so I want you guys to understand like you know if his will comes around you should at least unlock him no matter what just you know get the 10 sculptures to summon him but you know I don't want you guys to go half in with Isong Ye no 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 if you're gonna go for him go all in 690 legendary commander sculptures it's a massive investment but he is great PVE value and you can use him for PVP even into the late game which you can't say for basically any other early game commander in Rise of Kingdoms so it is honestly East Young Ye still kind of stands the test of time which is insane and that's pretty much going to do it for your season one commanders um there's really nobody else to invest in in the early game every gold key commander every other wheel is is useless and even if you look at season two commanders we're looking at commanders such as Edward of Woodstock and commanders like Tamiris these are commanders that I personally do not think are worth investing in Tamiris you know has her niche role I think that now that we have Shazam especially and Herman Prime there's really no room for Tamiris in a even in a seven army lineup really I don't I just I mean you could do it I just don't think you need to so really these days Edward and Tamiris I don't think there's any reason to run either of them there's never been a reason to run Edward besides like rally mains in KVK two like four years ago so just ignore these two when they come around completely useless don't worry about it at all and then when you move on to uh, season three of KBK, that's when things start to get really exciting. Season three is when you're going to get access to all of these other legendary commanders that you probably see on my screen and you're like, who even are they? I don't see them in my game. Now, the downside for archers and last time that I checked is that the wheel for archers in season three is the last wheel that comes around. And so archers are going to get their hands on some of their best commanders last, unfortunately. But by the time you get to season of conquest, you do want to save up hundreds of legendary commander sculptures because this is where you're going to get your hands on the best in slot commanders for your account okay now with that being said let's hop on over to the tier maker so that way we can talk about the best investment order for archers so right now you've already invested in a 5111 richard and probably a fully expertise isang Ye. and between these two of course isang Ye is the only one worth talking about when it comes to pvp especially in the end game if you did get your hands on isang Ye in the early game you're gonna have a pretty smooth transition in season of conquest which is one of the things that's really nice about archers because you can get your hands on herman prime and run these two together and you will be popping off as a single march now the catch here is that herman prime really you know 10 months ago i said that it would be worth investing in the expertise here uh, i don't think that's true actually now that we've had more time to evaluate herman prime what he does really his expertise doesn't pop that often and so honestly you don't really need to expertise herman prime getting him to five 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 one is a great place to stop again this fourth skill is it's fine but you don't really really need this you're inflicting your poison stacks no matter how much damage you're dealing here and really the poison stacks are what you care about the most on this skill so really a 5551 commander here for Herman Prime is only going to cost 380 legendary commander sculptures you do get him from the wheel of fortune he also has a nice spread of attack and defense on the second skill with 15 percent universal march speed which is really nice previously we've had to rely on commanders like Boudica who only have 10 percent march speed or you have to rely on you know commanders that have 20 percent march speed like Henry but it's only outside of a land's territory right so stuff like that is very unfortunate but the beauty of Herman Prime is that it is 15 percent march speed no matter where on the map he is and of course the best part is his active skill three target it's an it's a half circle of aoe it spreads poison stacks and the poison stacks are actually insane they make the target take three percent more skill damage per stack and that goes up to 15 stacks so you can have upwards of 45 percent skill damage taken increase to the target with a very nice strong aoe on top of it so herman prime is easily one of the best commanders in the game not only from a damage perspective but also from a supportive uh you know stance he's just going to support everyone else who hits those poison targets it's going to get the benefit of them being poisoned and you know the spoiler alert you're going to have a lot of skill damage on your own but so is all your allies right so a 5551 herman prime is cheap 380 sculptures and you slap YSG behind him and now all of a sudden Herman Prime also has a circular AoE it's 1700 he have he has a 
rage engine on the second skill for Lee Song Ye plus 50% skill damage on Lee Song Ye's fourth skill is going to make his active skill hit even harder right so all in all this is great also um we we're going to talk about relics in just a little bit actually you know what no let's just talk about relics right now because this is like there's really only one relic that's worth talking about and that is of course YSG and so as soon as you get to season of conquest or season three as soon as the museum comes around you want to invest in the third upgrade for Lee Song Ye just go all in on Lee Song Ye this is like the main guy that you're going to care about from the museum I don't like there's really almost no reason to get most of these commanders here there's just there's so many better commanders uh that you can get your hands on in seasonal conquest you're not going to care about pretty much any of them so it's safe to use all your currency on Lee Song Ye and that's going to get you 20 percent extra defense 12 percent skill damage on top of the 50 percent he already has so that's 62 percent bonus skill damage 20 percent defense on top of the 20 percent defense you already get from Herman Prime um, all in all you have a decent stat spread here you have unfortunately uh, no health but e even still decent March speed massive amounts of AOE skill damage and you also have the support talent tree from your Herman Prime which is going to get you a little bit of extra tankiness for this build as well of course if I were going to run Herman Prime as the primary I would probably run something like this you only put two points into rejuvenate over here you get three points into emergency protection you can put three points into razor sharp you obviously grab venomous sting for even more skill damage remember we had 62 percent skill damage on ysg now we have a total of 70 right which is just unbelievable then we have phoenix tail arrows and you have one point left over you just throw it over here in archer attack and you are good to go i guess technically you could put it here if you want it as well that might not be so bad too but it's up to you it, that last point is really a micro optimization but at the end of the day this is probably the first archer march that i think you can be investing in and feel really good about the next investment you're going to make is probably going to be in enhancing your existing army i know that that's a little bit boring because we want some new faces here but honestly uh you're probably going to go for Julia Leung and you're going to put your YSG on the bench just for now he will come back later don't worry about that but Zhuge Liang even at like 5511 is probably going to perform as good or better as YSG expertise even with the relic maybe you would argue 5551 Zhuge Liang but regardless <laughs> Zhuge Liang is just so insane okay he has a five target circular AoE it's a higher damage factor and he has a debuff on that active skill he has health like there's so much to love about him his fourth skill is a bonus three target AoE like he is one of the strongest if not these he's tied probably for strongest commander of the game with Liu Che in my opinion I think Liu Che is maybe a little bit better but honestly it, you can't go wrong uh Zhuge Liang is insane I would recommend expertising this commander I know that that's expensive for um free-to-play players but at the end of the day uh, he is again one of the best commanders in the game I don't think you're going to regret it not now and not in a while he also has the skill tree so there's just a lot to love here and this is the single best archer march in the entire game right now it has been for almost um it's been 11 months and this is still unchanged unchecked best archer march in the game your next investment is probably honestly it should probably be an infantry army infantry are so strong right now um, we are going to come back to some more archer investments but like i said before you are going to branch off before you come back full circle to be a full archer main at least in my opinion i think that's the way to go so for us we're going to go for a liu che with cpo prime now i know that uh, and really it's going to be the other way around i know that we have ragnar prime in the game now at the time of recording this we still don't know how we get him if it turns out that he's like super easy to get and way cheaper to get than than uh cpo prime then you could do that instead but since we don't know that i'm not going to make that assumption we do know he's not going to be on the wheel of fortune or mightiest governor so who knows how we are going to get him apparently it's an event but we don't know what that event is and if it's going to be recurring but regardless assuming that ragnar prime is not going to be significantly easier to get than cpo prime you're going to want to do a 5551 cpo prime and a fully expertise liu che now liu che can he's usable at pretty much any configuration that's how good he is 5511 5551 or 5533 whatever you do um, you're going to be able to use him right on the field i would say if you get them both to 5551 or you know 5551 and 5533 or 5515 however the skills land it doesn't matter 380 sculptures into both of them and you could start to use them on the open field and you'll be very happy about that but eventually you probably do want to expertise Liu Che his expertise is insane it gives him bonus rage bonus damage and bonus chances 
to proc extra things such as talents with a chance to proc or bonus extra damage like on alexander great second skill there's so much to love about Liu Che's expertise um it is it's very it doesn't look that insane when you read it but like the more you see it in action it's just very good so that's probably my recommendation for your second you know investment here you might be saying omni arc why aren't you going for william wallace or why aren't you going for ragnar prime whatever honestly the debuff on cpo's active skill is insanely good very supportive and he has more march speed than other legendaries on average for infantry i know william wallace has a flat 20 percent but he doesn't have a win he doesn't have a debuff so really i think cbo prime is still a better choice for a single infantry march than william wallace even though there's some smite synergy with liu che if for whatever reason you did get alex in kvk2 which we didn't even talk about in this video but if you did do that because you've watched another guide then you know that this is good to go you don't need to get cpo prime just run this and and you're good that's fine just run that it's up to you most players probably skip Alex uh even though he is very good these days but there's just a big question mark as to how long he'll be relevant so that's why a lot of people don't recommend investing in him even though you definitely can if you want to do but regardless uh this is probably what you're going to be looking at for your two army lineup now moving on from this um this is the tricky part right because at the time of recording this video we are on the cusp of new cavalry most likely we'll see cavalry in December if not it'll be I don't know sometime in like February or something like that but either way um, we'll probably see new cavalry soon and so it's hard to make a recommendation for cavalry right now I'll do my best but you have two choices right your third army can either be your second archer March right or you can branch off into cavalry assuming that you have like a bunch of blue prints lying uh lining up and you have like a bunch of armaments that are just ready to be used for cavalry it's up to you what you want to do here I think you know right now I, I would almost hold off on investing in cavalry because I think that they're just I don't know what's coming next for them but I hope it's something really good because they haven't had something really good in a in a while I don't know I just I hope they get something really strong is what I'm trying to say so let's assume you were going to build a cavalry march today as your third army um you have a couple of different choices here first of all you can either do the Nevsky with the Joan um, the benefit of this is that Nevsky's active skill has a really nice debuff and he gives a lot of skill damage to Joan of Arc which is really really cool and this is probably going to be the fastest army in your entire lineup by a significant margin because they are just both so fast with their march speed uh, the downside here is that uh, because they're so fast they will often find themselves out of position with the rest of your armies and also uh, the single target damage factor on Nevsky is a it's feeling a little bit weak these days so if you didn't want to run the Nevsky for those reasons you could rock the Huo instead lately I've been preferring this combination personally and that's more of an anecdote I feel like I don't I can't really explain why this is running better for me other than just the active skill hits harder with Huo and that's just is what it is you're going in and out of battle your active skill in the primary hits more often than anything so uh, that's probably why but you know that's just worth pointing out anecdotally I would say this army feels better but honestly they sh they both you know perform pretty similar in the open field honestly you're just gonna have to be very careful with them overextending because they will be the fastest march that you have they're gonna connect first they're gonna enter the battle first so keep that in mind let's assume you go with one of these commander repairs you can start using Nevsky at like five 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 one or something like that Huo is 5515 or something along those lines. I really like the expertise Nevsky because he gets so much extra skill damage on that fourth skill, plus his expertise gives him extra health. So I really like the expertise there. But right now, I would say wait until we see the next calves before you expertise any of these commanders. And really, you do not need to expertise Joan of Arc Prime. That has always been the case. You don't need the expertise here. You can get her to 5515, and that's going to be just fine. She's going to have plenty of stats, march speed, and her fourth skill is insane. If you use any skill reset items that you get anywhere it should be right here and there you go you have your third army lineup and now it's time that it's the moment you've all been waiting for your second archer march and your fourth march in total and who is it going to be well Asher Bonapal Asher Bonapal is a mightiest governor commander and unfortunately he is a commander that I would say does need to be expertise to be run in the open field the downside of this for free to play players is that first of all he's a mightiest governor commander and so it's going to be hard to get your hands on him in your kingdom if they don't sort of you know organize the ranks and give you one of them and things like that and also he is kind of a vanilla beat stick right like he just deals a lot of damage and so there's no like massive debuff or anything like that so he could be outclassed by you know a future archer release but the reason that I'm making this video now is because we just got archers in the form of Shajar so ideally this video will be relevant for a while and that's pretty much it right you have the fully expertise Ashurbanipal with the 
fully expertise YSG who has the triple relic upgrade both these commanders deal insane five target AoEs they have insane uh, skill damage bonuses they have a nice distribution of stats the only downside for Ashurbanipal is that he he has a little bit of RNG on the expertise which is you know unfortunate and his March speed is only relevant outside of your territory so that kind of stinks but besides that you're going to be pumping out so much damage here that you won't even really care if you can't get your hands on Ashurbanipal because he's a mightiest governor commander then what that means is by extension that locks you out of his second best choice which is Nebu right if you can't get Ashurbanipal you should get Nebu but if you can't get one you probably can't get the other right because they're both mightiest governor commanders and so in that uh, scenario is the only time where I would say that you would actually run Shajar right the only time that I would say you would run Shajar YSG as a second archer march is if you just can't get your hands on the mightiest governor commanders for whatever reason okay that's that that's how I feel about this and yeah I mean that's the one use for Shajar you can start using her at 5511 that's another benefit of her is that she like doesn't really need to be expertise I mean she has some nice extra skills if you do add more skills to her I would almost rather a 5515 for Shajar if anything I think the fourth skill is slightly more interesting than the third skill I know that the third skill a big portion of the fourth skill I should say is like a once per hour thing so that's kind of unfortunate but really the top part of the skill is what makes it shine you get up to 20 percent damage reduction that looks like all damage right um this third skill is just a from a five to a ten percent bump in only normal damage reduction which is good but it's not nearly as good as 20 percent all damage reduction right so really and then the healing factor here is tiny regardless so i don't really care that much about that they're gonna the allies are gonna get it regardless so honestly um i would say you know five five one five would be great but if you don't want to risk the RNG, you could just do 5551 five, or do 5533 three, or however the skills fall is fine. If you don't want to expertise her, I don't think you necessarily have to. I don't think that her expertise is like super insane. Like it's it's a three second buff. Um, really, this is great for infantry mains who are running like two smite marches, but that's not you if you're watching this video. So and 10% defense is like nice, but it's so many extra sculptures to get this. So really, I don't think you need to have her expertise. 5511 or 5515 is probably fine for Shajar if you are actually in the camp that does need to rely on her because you can't get your hands on a Midas Governor Commander. So this is kind of like the alternate build. If you can't get your hands on a Mightiest Governor Commander, you can rock this because Shajar is a wheel commander. And she's also cheaper. Like I said, 5511 or 5515 is much cheaper than the Ashurbanipal, who would have to be expertise in my opinion. You know, Nebu is 5515 as well who's solid but really if we're talking about the best possible you know choices this would be your best choice and this would be the route you would go if you can't get mightiest governor commanders 5515 is the way to go expertise and then it's lit your fifth army can be used for gathering runes in kvk making sure you have a battle rune for big battles is important you can use it to reinforce a rally or a garrison or to farm a node that is blocking allied territory that's preventing teleports uh, those are all things that you can use your fifth army for if you are curious to know what I think you could do with a third archer march then what I would recommend would be well the commanders are already on the screen here I think that that's the way to go if you're gonna run you know three archer marches it would look something like this you have Zhuge Liang with Herman Prime you have Shajar with YSG and then you have your Ashurbanipal with Nebu this actually spreads out the March speed very nicely you have 15 percent March speed here 20% March speed here and then you have 15% here and some outside territory March speed here so overall very good stuff I love the distribution of AoE all the marches are actually double AoE except for Shajar but her single target hit is very very strong so all in all this is probably the best three marcher lineup I can think of right now at the time of recording this but like I said earlier if a, if you're a free to play player you are probably not going to want to run three armies it's very expensive in terms of resources and with materials and blueprints and things like that so okay now let's talk about equipment and i do just want to say really quick a few months ago i posted a dedicated video exclusively for archer equipment where i went super in depth with the math that mathematically proves 
the best archer equipment set that you can use so if you want to go super in depth with archer equipment go watch that video but uh, you know this here is just going to be a very bare bones you know quick archer equipment guide to get you started okay if you're brand new to the game then you're gonna get your hands on the revival set you can also rock the uh, staff of the lost the blue piece as the weapon and then the boots are going to be the flame treads eventually you will replace the uh staff of the lost with the golden age this is going to get you a bunch of archer defense and at that point you're going to have a full purple set okay focus on getting special talents there i know if you're a brand new player you're like oh my god it's so hard to get you know purple pieces and i know but trust me over time you're going to get everything purple no problem so just focus on that for the early game the first two pieces that you can start working on that are legendary are going to be the dragon's breath plate because this gives you archer health which is very good and the dragon's breath boots this is going to get you the two piece set bonus so you're going to get some extra attack and then you can also start to work on the iconics for the boots which are going to be the most important iconics for archers because you get a bunch of march speed down here and historically they've been quite slow which is very very nice from there you can start working on some of the kvk pieces so you can replace the golden age with hydra's blast and the helmet you can replace with the ancestral mask of night so at this point you will have four legendary pieces the two kvk pieces and two dragon's breath pieces and that only leaves two more pieces to replace that's going to be the gloves and the legs and these pieces are actually going to be your leadership pieces um the reason for this is because the leadership gloves are defense whereas the dragon's breath gloves are attack and you would much rather have the defense here and then the legs are notoriously universal health with some march speed for archers which is really really nice so we really like that and this is going to be another two piece set bonus of three percent troop defense which we love so that's going to be sort of like your best in slot end game uh equipment here if you want to go for it i know that i just ran through that super quick as if it's easy to get these pieces i know it's not i know it's going to take you a very long time to build the set that i just told you but if you work on the pieces in the order that i told you it should be a nice progression and a nice upgrade over time and then if you want to build a second archer set of all legendaries and you don't want to overlap pieces because you don't want to you know have competing blueprint progression for both archer sets then you know for the helmet you could do the set piece helmet the set piece weapon the chest you can either do another dragon's breath here or you could even do the milky way uh because this is going to be your second archer set so it's going to be a little bit worse than the other one but this is literally a free-to-play piece that you're going to get this from crystal keys over time they are very rare but you can get them for free and it's again archer health which is amazing same thing for the gloves if you're not going to be rocking the gauntlets of the glorious goddess then you can either do the dragon's breath gloves and you know have a sort of two piece or i guess work towards a four piece set because you're already gonna already gonna have the helmet and the weapon and then so you can either do um, the dragon's breath legs or the dragon's breath boots and of course if you do the boots it's going to overlap with your other set but that'll get you the four piece set bonus which is extra skill damage which is nice and then the final slot can either be the dragon's breath legs or the glorious goddess again an overlap here for the legs and then for the boots if you didn't do a second overlapping dragon's breath boots you could do the greaves of the glorious goddess um, and that's going to get you some troop health here as well so just something to consider um pieces to avoid i would say probably don't get the commander boots and don't get the tacits of the war god these aren't i mean they just they're not great i mean they're free but they're not great so not really worth the legendary materials in my opinion it's not the end of the world if you craft them but you know it is what it is they're just not really the best choices when it comes to prioritizing your iconic upgrades i personally really like doing the boots first as you can see my boots are already iconic five because i really like the bonus march speed for archers it's just like i need them as fast as possible because they're so much slower it seems like than everything else also putting an iconic crystal in your leg is going to be very important to at least get that extra base health which is very very good beyond that I would focus on your kvk pieces so your helmet and if you followed my original advice the um you know hydra's blast weapon as well and then from there you can further progress through the legs and the gloves and then finally you'll do the chest last because you don't really care about like upgrade four and beyond if you're a free to play player so it is what it is again if you want to go more in depth with archer equipment watch the full dedicated video and the last thing i want to talk about here in this video is which armaments you should be focusing on acquiring passively over time 
um this is kind of a no-brainer to me but it's going to be primarily your wedge formation for bonus skill damage that's going to be the one that you run on all of your armies okay you're gonna for, if you're an archer main you're gonna run wedge formation on everything so that is the single most important formation second place is probably going to be either the arch formation or circle formation uh because this is I mean circle formation could potentially be the future of archers we just don't know it yet right now we only have one kind of commander pairing in the game that really loves the circle formation and that is Choi Young with Shajar which we talked about before at least we talked mainly about Shajar but these both do mighty healing and they really like the circle formation but they're really the only commanders in the game that are liking the circle formation so that's a very niche choice but if anyone's gonna pick it it's gonna be an archer main so most likely you would do something like uh this if you're an archer player uh the only reason that I have arch here is because if you do eventually run Liu Che with somebody like William Wallace or with somebody like Alexander the Great or something then you could start to get some really nice armaments for them um really the only two that archers care about are these two honestly so whatever you want to put in that third slot is up to you um but I personally think arch formation is great for infantry and then circle formation will be for possibly archers in the future maybe picking this is just trying to future proof your account but really you know if you're an archer main you're going to be using wedge formation for literally everything okay so uh just just keep that in mind the wedge formation is bonus skill damage it's amazing and it's also going to get you the um if well if you can you can get your hands on the hunter inscription from the kvk shop which is going to get you even more extra skill damage um and that is a very it's relatively easy compared to other legendary inscriptions it's very easy to get your hands on um, because you can just come in here to the inscription shop and bada bing bada boom there is your hunter now it is autark limited i understand that so it's not easy but it's easier uh than literal rng right so uh just keep that in mind but anyway guys that's gonna do it for the archer guide uh hopefully you found this video useful if you're a free-to-play player or a new player um and even if you're a lower mid or high spender there might be some tips in here that can kind of guide you down the path of the best two or three archer lineup that you could be running here in rise of kingdoms unfortunately the release of shajar hasn't really changed that much for many players it's really only moved the needle for players that are running three archer marches or again like i said before a second archer march and you just don't have your hands on mightiest governor commanders then you have shajar to fill in that slot other than that it's very similar to before you would just normally run asher bonifal with ysg and then you would run your Yugi Young with harman prime and that's pretty much going to do it but guys if you found this video useful and you made it all the way to the end drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider commenting let me know what you think about all of the different things we talked about in this video upgrade order best commanders best equipment all that stuff like i said quick reminder quick plug for my archer equipment guide check that out it is very relevant and important if you're an archer main and finally if you appreciate guide videos for rise of kingdoms consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace